Hey Nim Tags and welcome back. This is Ash from Hill My PC. So today I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a slow laptop at home and for free. So here are the symptoms. Very long booting time from the minute you press the start button. It can take over five minutes to get onto the Windows desktop environment. Slow opening of applications, freezing and getting stuck. Fans can also be heard revving really loud and the laptop becomes hot even after a few minutes of normal usage. So I'm sure some or many of you guys can empathize with this situation and it's very annoying. One of the common repairs that people usually do would be a complete wipe and reload, i.e. reinstalling a new OS or in some cases of laptops from companies like Dell, HP, they would usually incorporate an easy restore to factory settings with a couple of clicks. However, this is not the subject of this tutorial. While it's true that a new OS can potentially solve uh, a lot of issues, if your problem was only software based, i.e. it was like an infection or some corruption of some major files, then and yes, that would help. But if it was hardware related, then no amount of reinstalling an OS is going to do any difference. Besides, with a new OS, it usually means that all your data will be completely wiped off. And unless you had backed up beforehand, you're doomed. Yes, it's true that you could possibly retrieve your data and then put it back in there. But sometimes the laptop will not allow you to do this due to various malfunctions. So what can you do at home to determine whether it's software or hardware related or even both? Well, I'm glad you asked. In my experience, I like to get rid of the hardware issues first, no matter what laptop or desktop I get. With almost every computer that I get for repair, as long as it has some sort of power, i.e. it does turn on and you are able to get into BIOS or UEFI, but it has issues like not able to boot into the operating system or there is no display or some other issues. I usually start with this simple test to eliminate issues like CPU, RAM, screen, motherboard and graphics card. But for issues like if there's no power or you can't get into BIOS or UEFI screen, then that's a different story and different tutorial for another time. So get yourself your Linux Mint USB installation disk. I'm using the, I think the cinnamon version is Linux Mint Cinnamon 17.264 bit. Now, if you're not sure which one to get, just get a 32 bit version. And I'm going to put a link below for a tutorial on how to make one. This is the case for this Dell Inspiron 1545, which was given to me by a relative of mine who did not want it repaired since they became fed up with its extreme slowness. It has an Intel Pentium dual core T4300 at 2.10 gigahertz, 3 gigabyte of DDR2 RAM, a 250 gigabyte hard disk storage and Windows 7 Home Premium 32 bit edition. I took out the back cover, which was held up by one, two, three and four screws. And also there were two screws here, one and two. And these were holding the hard disk which we're going to leave out for this tutorial. So the first thing I want you guys to do, if you're going to attempt this, is to do a hard reset. So we've unplugged the power cable and we're going to take off the battery and leave the battery out. And we're going to do a hard reset by press and holding the power button for 15 seconds. Once that's done, plug the power cable back in you can leave the battery out and also we're leaving the hard disk out. Grab your Linux USB disk, plug it in and I'm also going to put a normal flash drive for some files that I'm going to need. This is nothing, this is not something you guys need to do. So turn it on, press F2 usually for laptops or sometimes it's Dell key or F10, depends on your make and model, check your manual if in doubt because we want to enter into setup. Sometimes there can also be a boot option menu. In this case, there's F12, but I prefer to go into BIOS or UEFI because I want to get as much info as possible before logging into the main operating system. Right, hope you can see that. We've got some info here and uh, checking the system information. Yeah, you confirm that it's got three gigabyte of RAM, DDR2, and it's a Pentium dual core, T4300 at 2.10 gigahertz. Excellent. So just look for the boot sequence. And uh, if you had the hard disk in there, it would also be ticked on the internal hard disk drive, but now we only got USB storage device. So you can press F10 or ESC button 
to log out and to reboot. So this time, because I've already checked what's there, I'm going to look for the boot option to, and yep, we're going to boot into Linux Mint. If done correctly, the laptop should boot into the Linux USB disk. This is a fully functional operating system with everything you need to operate the laptop for any normal daily usage. And voila, you got computer icon, home and install Linux Mint. And we're not gonna be installing today. I'm also gonna to want to plug in this USB flash drive because I want some files. I think this might work here. Yeah, it's recognized. I've got some files on there, which I want to save too. Okay, with Linux, you probably will need to activate the wireless driver. So go into the start menu button and type in driver manager, press enter. It's gonna search for any wireless function and the driver. In case you don't have any wireless driver available, then you should now try and plug in the ethernet cable. Okay, it's detected a driver. We're going to select it and we're going to click on apply changes because you want to be able to access the internet. See, we've got the drive out and here we've got a full working system in there. It's brilliant. Leave that there. Okay, that's done. So I should be able to find some wireless network. Yeah, and that's mine. I'm going to put my keyword. All right, press connect and we should be able to, there you go, we're connected to a wireless network. Brilliant, Et voila. Now, let's go into a browser, which is Mozilla Firefox by default. And I would advise you to check a website where you can test audio and video. So YouTube comes to mind. I've heard it's a good website. You guys should check it out. And also on YouTube, I heard there are some people called YouTubers. So you can type any random thing, like, I don't know, heal my PC, let's see what that, gives us and once you get that um, just kind of you know pick a video from this not case um, just this one for example I don't know it looks silly and voila looks to be working skip add excellent no problem, so we off that. Now, if you've got any other things you want to check, like your email and stuff, be my guest. Also down here, if you had your hard disk plugged in here, you would be able to see it somewhere down here under the network or devices attached. Right now, I've only got my USB flash drive, but that would have come up if you had it also, and if it was working. Um, et voila. So we can off that. So now you can go ahead and exit, shut down, Bob your on call. So now that you've seen that everything works fine, what this tells you is apart from the hard disk, which we took out, everything else is working okay. Like the CPU, the RAM, the graphics card, the screen, but more importantly, the motherboard. Now that you've narrowed it down to one component only, i.e. the hard disk, the next step is to diagnose whether the issue is a physical problem or software or both, but it's all gonna be based around that. If you wanna see that repair, so stay tuned for part two, upcoming next. And in part two, I'm gonna show you how to attempt to repair the hard drive before contemplating a wipe and reload situation. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below or contact me on these platforms. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so. Like or dislike this vid and also remember to share it. Once again, thank you so much for watching. This was Ash from Hill My PC. Until next time, peace out.